All right, let's see if we can work a little bit on the distinction between uh, work and energy. Uh, first off, let's clear up what a force is. Uh, a force can be considered as a push or a pull on an object. It, it is a vector because it has a magnitude. It's an amount. You can measure it with a number. And it's also got a direction. It's pretty impossible to push or pull something nowhere. You have to do it somewhere. So it has direction. It's measured in a, a unit called a newton. And as you might have guessed, that's named after Sir Isaac Newton, who did a lot of work in physics uh, back in the uh, 1700s. And uh, the symbol for it is a capital N. So when forces are applied to an object, you need to understand that if the forces are balanced and they equal each other, then there's no acceleration. So here we have, for example, two people that are pushing on an object. And if they're doing it with equal forces and those forces are perfectly balanced, this object isn't going anywhere. It's not going to start moving. It's therefore going to have no acceleration. And so here we have an example of a tug of war that's taking place. One team is pulling with 320 newtons towards the left. The other team is pulling with 300 newtons towards the right. Well, there's a difference here in these forces. They are not balanced. They are not equal. In fact, it looks like we have an extra 20 newtons on balance going towards the left because 320 take away 300 means we have 20 newtons going to the left. So if the forces are not balanced, there will indeed be an acceleration in a certain direction. Work is defined as whenever you have a force and you move an object through a certain distance in the direction of that force, then work has been done. So make sure you're clear on this, okay? So work is equal to force multiplied by distance that the object travels. Or the quick way is to say W for work is equal to force times distance. Now work is defined in units called a joule. Force is measured in newtons. Distance is measured in meters. So the abbreviation here would be one joule is equal to one newton times a meter. That little dot between the n and the m signifies multiplying. Now, if we break this down, if we take your newton and break it down, we can get something rather interesting. So a little sidestep here. A newton is defined as a kilogram times meters divided by second squares. Or if you wish, you could say this is a mass, and meters per second squared is an acceleration, mass times acceleration. If I take that and put this in, put the newton here, broken down into its units of one kilogram times a meter divided by second squared, and I multiply it by another meter, that's the distance that the force is applied, I end up with a kilogram times a meter squared divided by a second squared. So notice that we have uh, another square on the meter here. And that's what a joule is. By definition, a joule is one kilogram times a meter squared divided by a second squared. Please bear in mind that for work to have occurred, you must be able to check off the following three. The object must move. If it doesn't move, no work was done. A force must be applied to make that object move. And the third step is crucial. The object, obviously, must move in the same direction as the applied force. Otherwise, you ain't getting nowhere. So let's do a little bit of practice here. We have a tugboat towing a tanker through a canal using a tow rope. Calculate the work done by the tugboat if it applies an average horizontal force of 6.50 times 10 to the third newtons on the tow rope while towing the tanker through a horizontal distance of 150 meters. They want us to find the work. Okay, work is what we're looking for. They give us the force. They tell us that the force is equal to 6.50 times 10 to the third newtons. And they also tell us the distance. The distance is 150 meters. Well, the equation was work is equal to force multiplied by distance. So work will be the force, which is 6.50 times 10 to the third newtons multiplied by a distance of 150 meters. So what is that? Bring out the calculator, turn it on. 6.50, and represent this as a scientific number, so press your second function key and EE. 6.50E, so this is the exponent, times 10 to the third. So there's our scientific number, 6.50 times 10 to the third. Multiply that by 150 meters. And we get an answer, pretty big answer actually. We get an answer of 97500 
joules because a newton multiplied by a meter is now a joule. We should uh, think about significant digits in this one because I noticed that here we have three significant digits and three significant digits. We really ought to bring this down to three significant digits. Uh, the 9, 7, and 5 are worth keeping. How about if we just convert the whole thing into scientific notation and call this 9.75 times 10 to the... Now the decimal point has to go back 1, 2, 3, 4. It's got to go back five spots. So maybe the whole thing is easier by simply giving our answer in scientific notation rather than standard notation. A large crane did 2.2 times 10 to the fourth joules of work in lifting a demolition ball a vertical distance of 9.5 meters. Calculate the average force exerted by the crane. So what do we have here? We're told the work is 2.2 times 10 to the fourth power joules. So they gave us the work. They also give us the distance that the crane lifted at uh, 9.5 meters. And what they're asking us to find is the force. That's the question mark. Well, our original equation said that work is equal to force multiplied by distance. All right, but I want to solve this thing for force. How can I do that? Well, what if I just gave you a really simple little piece of math? If I told you that 15 is equal to 3 times 5, and then I said to you, what would you do to find the 3, or where the force is? You'd say, simple, take 15 and divide it by 5. All right, well, let's apply that same strategy to our original equation. If you want to find the force, then take the work, which was mimicked by the 15, and divide it by the 5, which is the distance. So that work can be, a force would be the work divided by the distance. So now we can do our math. The force will be the work. 2.2 times 10 to the fourth power joules divided by the distance, which is 9.5 meters. And what do we get out of that deal? Well, once again, enter the scientific number as 2.2 second function EE, e, and the exponent is 4. 2.2 times 10 to the fourth joules. Divide that by 9 decibel 5 meters. What do we get? Okay, we get quite another big number again here, so let's let's at least write it down. Uh, it comes out to 2,315 decimal, 7, 8, 9, 4, yada, yada, yada. I mean, this is crazy. Uh, oops, sorry, we're going to do joules divided by meters here. The answer is not going to be joules. The answer is going to be newtons. But that number is is pretty ridiculous here because really when you look at your data you've only got two significant digits here and you've only got two significant digits in the distance so we're gonna to have to hack this thing down to just two significant digits why don't I do it like I did before and make this into a scientific number two point what's the second number going to be a three because after the three is a one so we would round down times ten to the one two times ten to the third power Newtons. So that's how much force this crane exerted. A car's engine performs 3.5 times 10 to the fourth joules of work to move a car. If it requires 4.5 times 10 to the 3 newtons to move the car, then what distance will the car move? So let's make a list of what we got here. Our work is 3.5 times 10 to the fourth joules of work. Uh, we're given a force, so let's put the force in. The force is 4.5 times 10 to the third power newtons, and they want us to find the distance. That's going to be our question mark. Well, once again, our basic equation is work is equal to force times distance. All right. Um, well, if I substitute for that, again, that simple little equation where I said 15 is equal to 3 multiplied by 5, and this time I said I want to find this number where the distance is, where the 5 is, you would say, well, that's easy. Take 15 and divide it by 3, and you'll get your 5. All right, well, we apply the exact same strategy to the original equation, and we would say that if you want to find the distance in this particular case, or the, the 5, then you would take your work, the 15, and divide it by the force, which is the 3. So by using a simple little substitution here, we can get it straight as to what to do. So the distance is going to be the work divided by the force. So the work was 3 decibel 5 times 10 to the fourth power joules divided by a force of 4 decimal 5 
times 10 to the third power newtons. And what are we going to get? So calculator time. We have 3.5 second function exponent. It's the fourth power divided by 4.5 second function exponent, the third power. And what do we get? Huh, another crazy number. This one time we're going to get 7.7777. And that's going to repeat forever. Um, now, well, let's go back to scientific notation. I've only got two significant digits here and two here. So why don't I call that seven decimal? Now, the second number, because there's a seven in the third place, I'm going to have to round that up and call it eight. 7.8 .8 times 10 to the... Um, one, or if you prefer, why don't we just call that 7.8 meters. Now, how do you get meters out of that deal? Well, if you'll remember, a joule is a kilogram times a meter squared per second squared, and you're going to divide that by a newton, which is a kilogram times a meter per second squared. And so what's going to happen here is everyone's going to cancel out. The, the kilograms will cancel the kilograms. The second squared will cancel the second squared. This single meter right here will cancel off the square, and that leaves you behind just one meter. And so that's why when the dust settles and you take a joule and divide it by a newton, you end up with just meters. So we can also look at the situation from a graphical point of view. If I'm dragging an object uh, with this spring scale here across a surface uh, and I capture the information on that one, so on this chart I have the distance that I drag the object and the force that I applied uh, on the spring scale. If I plot this, you'll soon start to see that uh, at 5 meters the force was 3 newtons and it was still 3 newtons, 3 newtons, 3 newtons. In other words, as I've been dragging this object along, I'm getting a perfectly straight line here. The force I used was 3 newtons. If you want to figure out how much work was done for a certain distance, that's actually pretty easy to do. Uh, you just got to figure out what distance you wish to uh, concern yourself with. Let's say, for example, I want to look at this distance. How much uh, work was done to drag this object from a distance of uh, 5 meters uh, to 20 meters? That's pretty easy to do. Uh, 20 meters take away 5 meters. Uh, that means we dragged it a distance of 15 meters. Uh, how much force was applied? Well, that was always the same. Uh, that never changed. It was always uh, 3.0 newtons. So if I'm going to calculate the, uh, the work that was done using the equation that work is equal to force multiplied by distance, then the force applied was always 3.0 newtons. The distance in this case that I dragged the object was a total of 15 meters. So if I do a quick multiply there, 3 times 15, I get 45. Now, 45 what? Well, if you multiply a newton times a meter, you get joules. And so the work in this case is 45 joules. And that's done by simply taking the area underneath your graph.